Hi. Hi, I'm Dr. Rosemary Thomas from Frontier Kids Care. Welcome to Frontier TV, where we dispel distilled wisdom from our learning, not waiting menu. We help parents who are anxious about their child's well being in health, learning, and parenting. So today we have a special, special guest in our conversations with the experts. And she is no other than Marina Job, and she is the founder and the director. Now it's a long word here, but it's Jean Baptiste Saint Augustine Activity and Preschool Center. Did I get that right, Marina? Yes, I believe you did. I broke up for a while. We are online, so things you get used to it. Yes. But I believe you did. Jean Baptiste Saint Augustine Preschool and Activity Center. Great. Well, welcome to. Frontier TV today. We're going to have such fun <laughs> because. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, you're most welcome. So, Marina has been, she's a serious expert because she's been a teacher for over, I think you told me about 40 years. Yeah. I started in 1981. I stopped counting. I, I just well, don't we don't count, to anymore. count anymore. But she's a seasoned teacher. And, <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you had? your preschool, which is, I would have to tell you people, it's the premier preschool in Trinidad and Tobago. That's my, that's my feeling. <laughs> so tell us how long you've been directing. Fun. We took in our first set of children in January 2010. That would be 10 years ago. 10 this January, ago. we should have celebrated our 10th year of yes. being in existence. Wow. And I remember when you started and wondering if people would come. And now people, you can't even get it. It's, it's a waiting list. But right now you said you have 40 children online. Yes, we have over 40. School. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So we're gonna talk about some fun things today because for us, play is the foundation of everything we do at Front Ticket Scale because play is children's work. So we have a chance to interview someone who does the same thing in the you know, education sphere. So tell us something about your preschool and how you, what's your vision and what makes your, what makes you do what you do? Well, like your frontier kids, our motto is actually learning through play. Wow. We believe <laughs> that um, children can learn through play and it's the best way for them to learn through play. Yes. Wow. So even though we are doing all the activities, we believe they need to have them ready for primary school, we try to do it in a fun way. Exactly. So we try to be as creative as we can be while mm -hmm. getting them to explore all the things they need to explore and open them up to, to their creative juices, as you would say, because yes. we, we, we no longer want children just receiving information. We all know if we do that and they don't know about giving, when they reach the university, they suffer. True. So from now we can get them to just be willing to explode with ideas and, and, wow. and fun way of doing things. And yes. that's the whole idea behind it. I say to my parents all the time, children must be seen and not heard is way, way gone. It's, yes. it's, it's just <laughs> supposed to be buried so deep. They, they have to yes. be heard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just how they say what they have to say is what we have to guide them towards, but yes. they must be heard. They must be heard. Very good. Yes. Well, I think sometimes the children are the opposite way now. They, they speak so much, but I mean, as you say, it's in a controlled way. And I think I, I'm sure you may reiterate what I'm saying, but from my sense, I, you know, I tell the parents that between birth and five years, you're molding the child. So it's like plasticine, you can form them. So these are the formative years. Then after five years old, it's really hard to, 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 to you know, you can only teach and model good behavior, but it's extremely difficult to change things because you're already molded. It's like concrete, you're trying to chip away something that's already formed. So what you're doing in the preschool years is so important. And, and Rosemary, it's even as early as three years, yes. you'll find whatever expectations you put out for the child mm -hmm. is what the child then gives back to you. 
So if you expect a child to speak to you, the child will give it back to you in sentences. If you expect the child to be a baby, then mm -hmm. the child will be a baby for you. And as you say, it's very, very quickly, they go from three to five to six to seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a long time Calypso, um, <laughs> Rupert. Oh, that's what I remember now. They, 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 one minute they speak to the child, look at yaffin, yaffin, yaffin. And then at <laughs> the end, oh, Rupert, get away from me. The, the idea is <laughs> you give one thing to the child and then you expect when the child is a teenager yes. um, that, that you get something else. But they will do exactly the process you have been doing. So if you allowed your child to speak and have conversations and you share with them, share with them does not mean that they take control of an adult situation. Yes. So you, you, you can't expect the four or five-year-old to tell you, I want to go to X school because they don't have that information. Yes. But you can share with them. I disagree with the way you treated your friend because it's, I think it was hurtful. Let me hear what you have to say. And mm -hmm. you can hold a conversation, mm -hmm. even if at the end of the conversation, I have to say, okay, I hear your point of view, but I still disagree with you. And because I'm the adult and understand, I, we're going to have to get consequences to the actions you have taken here. So at 13 years, it is going to be new for the child to hear this because yes. they're accustomed with a rapport yes. of explaining and stating mm -hmm. their point of view. I give you mine. And there's always the knowledge that I am the adult. So the final say will stay with me. Yes. But we will talk through. And sometimes as the adult may say, okay, maybe I didn't get it. I stand back and I'll observe. Yes. But never forget we're not partners, we're not friends. Oh gosh, I love We've this. We've got to guide, we've got to guide. That's I all love I this. I love this because you see why she's an expert? <laughs> because she, you know, we're on the same page because both of us see children and we have the honor, I would have to say, of helping parents allow these children to unlock their full potential. That's our tagline, that's what we try to do because all children are gifts and our purpose, you and my, me and my medical home, where I help parents with health, learning and parenting, and you in your preschool where it's more learning are doing the same, you know, we're, we're, we're bookends, we're doing, we're both, we're helping the children to achieve that and be gifts to the world. And I love the way you say achieve their potential, eh? because yeah. there is a potential they can achieve. Yeah. And with the support of all of us, they can reach there or they can fall below that potential. Yes, yes, exactly. And I saw in your you know, bio, you talked about, you know, children coming from different perspectives, different biological um, backgrounds, um, socioeconomic, educational. And really what you said is play brings them all together. Each one can learn and develop irregardless of you know, yes. the environment, so, different environments they came from. Yes, so so let's take um, different learning styles. So we have had yes. children mm -hmm. who are what you will call, uh, although a friend of mine tells me she's beginning to hate that word, the normal child. Mm -hmm. And yes, I hate that word too. <laughs> we have had the child who may be on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. We've had the child who's been in Down syndrome. Now, depending on the severity, we may tell the parents, give them an extra year mm -hmm. before they start with us. But we mm -hmm. take them because everyone has a different learning style, but all children love to play. Yes. Children don't I see differences. That. Adults see differences and we yes. tell children about it, but they really don't. All they see is another child to play. So in that. our environment, we've had all different styles and makeup of children. And what we see are other children who just naturally go to help. So they go to the help the child who doesn't seem to know how to climb the steps to go up, the, to come down the slide. Yes. And you see some of them just taking on the parent and mother and father role of that child on the playground. You yeah. see them suddenly take it. So they learn how to mix and play with each other. 
the learning style in the classroom because again, we're using creative ways. So we're not going to pick a pen and paper to teach one and one make two, no. but we may get them, you run and get a block, bring another block. If we put those blocks together, let's count them. So everybody can get a block, everybody get any toy you want. Mm -hmm. Let's get a friend. So the two of you, so that's you are one and this friend is one, two of you, let's make a circle and mm -hmm. let's play games in the circle. So they're yes. playing games. And the subconscious, we are given different teaching styles to them. Yes. Anybody can do it. You, mm -hmm. you have a friend, you know, change. Let's get another friend now. Yes. It even goes to to tell them how to make friends because we are yes. suddenly in an environment where children do not have others to socialize with. Yes. So you start doing games. Let's pretend, mm -hmm. walk up to your friend and say, hi, my name is Marina. What is your name? Yeah. Can I play with you? And we always, again, boundaries are important. So you say that you have got a boundary, you've got to respect the person. The person says, no, you said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So we dramatize a lot. And we have to try all oh. different types of drama. <laughs> yes. Because this is what the outer world is not just the academics of life. It's no, the ability no. to mix socially. Exactly. That so is so important. That is so important, especially in our time when the focus is so heavily on matriculation, getting good grades and scholarships. And we're producing so many children and adults, young adults who don't have social skills, who don't know how to have delayed gratification, who don't understand that they are here to serve the world. You know, you've been given gifts and it's not just to be gift, you know, be it's good enough to be gifted, but you must be a gift to the world, you know, and yeah. it's a problem because I think that preschool environment or lack of it has not given this focus. It's been really on preparing children to go into primary school, to do well in primary school, to do high school, you know, do very well, go and be a doctor, lawyer, this or that. But Guess what happened last year that appended everything? <laughs> COVID-19, <Yes>. right? <laughs> and it, it, the problem is we don't look at the end game. So yes. as you said, it's all about all of this to be the doctor, lawyer, whatever it is. But somehow we forget something called family life in it. Mm -hmm. Somehow we forget that even if you achieve whatever your dream is to become, as a professional, mm -hmm. if you don't have someone to share it with or laugh with or call and, and talk about it, life mm -hmm. can be pretty empty. Yes. Now, when you're 16, 17, you may not see that. But mm -hmm. when you are a parent, mm -hmm. when you are in the working world, when you are a certain age, you yes. have to start recognizing it can't, when you meet someone or you go somewhere, it doesn't get easy for you to say, I went to a top secondary school in Trinidad and Tobago. So what? Yes, yes. You know, you, you can't go to a meeting and, and talk. You can't go to your, ch your child's school PTA and put up your hand to assist the school. You can't do anything to make your child enjoy life. Enjoy life. So yeah. all the child knows about is studying and passing an exam. Mm -hmm. So we end up with a failed human being mm -hmm. and a failed society. And wow. right now in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. we have to be watching what's happening with our society mm -hmm. because it's not enough that my child got through and yours did not because yeah. the child who did not get through is going to affect the child who got through. Oh, good. That, that is so profound and so true. And I think we, in our, each in our different way, we, we really talk to parents about this and, you know, show them and, and teach them and, and mentor them even, um, because it's a, what you're saying is so, so true. So let's talk about what happened last year. <laughs> you know, when this <laughs> COVID epidemic, well, pandemic really started, all of us had to pivot and change and do new things. You know, for us, we started telehealth. We went into, you know, more into, you know, YouTube channel, teaching people how to, you know, to live and to, to, to about their health and their well-being and so on. 
and I imagine you must have had some challenges. What happened to you and what did you do when the pandemic? Well, started? like everyone else, we, we, you kind of went into shock. First of all, because you couldn't begin to understand what, what do they mean by this pandemic and how when they say the place is shut down, it can't be long. So your first thought was hmm. it happened like a week or two before school closed in April. So you thought, okay, by the time we, we just close early. And by the time the two weeks of April holidays plus, we should be back out in school and everything will be normal. Yes, yeah. But thank God for vision because by April we yes. started realizing mm -mm, oh. it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So with the help of young people, young people who understand that the, the internet is not just for social media. Mm -hmm. with, uh, my daughter, myself, we started doing a lot of research Mm -hmm. on what is happening worldwide. How could we reach children? What was going on? In wow. the meantime, I'm hearing of other preschools who are shut down and they mm -hmm. have to close down because yes. It's, yes. it's scary what's happening. Yes. So we sent out, we got ideas and my daughter came up with some wonderful little things and we started playing with the other teachers. You come online, you do this and we started doing a lot of pros and cons of what would be and how could we do this and what could we do. Wow. And for the first term, that would be the April to June term last year, April to it June. was an experimentation, a 10 weeks of experiment. Mm -hmm. We got some parents, thank God, who were willing to come on to, uh, with us. My teachers worked for almost free. And when I say almost free, I must mm -hmm. say almost free, that too, because everybody was trying to see how we could stay alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Stay alive. Mm -hmm. That too, we got parents working with us. Our fees were cut in half and we got mm -hmm. a few who came on and a few said, no, they'll wait it out because it will go away. Mm -hmm. um, what we did recognize though are the children who came on with us and it was a struggle understanding what to do this mute mic, this um, mute, the, mute the mic, turn on the camera, move in classrooms as we had to do. It was challenging, but the children who stuck it out with us mm -hmm. was solid mm -hmm. to move into primary school. Because wow. primary school stayed online. Yes. And none of us expected that. Yes. But yes. they were very ready to move into wow. primary school. And we got the feedback from them and even from teachers who had them in primary school, how comfortable they were with using the mm -hmm. computer mm -hmm. and using, doing, following the instructions and doing what had to be done. Mm -hmm. But it is not an easy thing and it was not easy. Mm -hmm. we, it, a lot of it depended to on parents willing to work with us too. Mm -hmm. So parents were scared, of course, at first, because again, we are in a world nobody's accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's the first time parents were getting an insight into mm -hmm. what you do in the classroom. Wow. So yeah. you may know your child comes home with certain things, but you won't know how they achieve it. Wow. So yeah. sometimes the, the teachers, and I know we've read it, sometimes people, oh, the teachers are so rough on the children. Sometimes the teachers were a little harsh because they too are a little frustrated. But fortunately, mm -hmm. I, my, my teachers were pretty good. I never had that problem. But I understood what happened in other environments because mm -hmm. I can see why. We, we immediately split the children up so they were in classes of about six or seven. So each teacher had about six or seven children. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to reach six or seven mm -hmm. than it is to reach a class of 20. Yes. So we were able to then do what you call round robin. So each teacher taught one topic. So we had to think things quickly and start mm -hmm. working out ideas yeah. of how to cover mm -hmm. this, what to do. Mm -hmm. we, we recognized when again experimenting, we recognized we lost the children at their age if we stayed after half 11. Mm -hmm. So we knew whatever we did, we had to do okay. it within a, the younger group, two hours, the older group, nothing more than two and a half hours. Wow. And inside of there, yes. we had to have a break too, to mm -hmm. get them off of it. So we started doing things. We know they had to get in some exercise, some fun cross talk with their friends. So we had to mix that into. Wow. So, so it's it, 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 a lot of looking on, learning, observing, 
-hmm. We assessed the children, we assessed the teachers. We looked at the big picture of what we were still trying to accomplish mm -hmm. and then see how best we could. So by the time that third term was finished, mm -hmm. we had to get ready for the new September term. And yes. when people were talking, they would be out and real. We recognized, we started preparing for that. But yes. by, by August, we recognized mid-August, we're not opening. So we started planning for that. So it's a lot of forethinking. thinking. So right yes. now, yes. they're talking opening in September. We don't yes. think it's going to quite work. Yes. So we have our plans now and we're making the plans for September having everything there. If we open in September, great. If we don't open in September, it means mm -hmm. we'll have to come out by August and get what we had activity kits ready for the children mm -hmm. to send home. Because when we had them home without the activity kits, boy, the parents wanted to die. They had a whole <laughs> lot of things they had to make to get ready for classes, mm -hmm. but they were very supportive and, and they did it. So it was mm -hmm. really a learning lesson. So like this last session here, when we got the immediate a state of emergency, again, we had our activity kits in school, but oh. <laughs> we did not want parents to break, to come to us as a group. So we had to tell them, okay, parents, we'll simplify what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So all the materials we had already spent money on and we had there, it's, it's at school. So it's your, a loss you face, mm -hmm. but you, more importantly, is you still to get to work with your children through mm -hmm. the parents being cooperative so mm -hmm. it really is teamwork you know it really is it's mm -hmm. not just the yes. teacher and the child mm -hmm. it's got mm -hmm. to be the parent working mm -hmm. with the teacher and child mm -hmm. to, as you said from the beginning for the best for the child to move the child forward yes that's 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 really amazing because um there were challenges but i must say i, I know that you were prepared even from before because even when no one had iPads, you had iPads in your preschool. I remember visiting and thinking, wow, a preschool with iPads before people were even onto it. So it also talks about the vision to be at the frontier of things because you were had the foresight to realize that this is going to be, this technology was already incorporated. So I imagine when you had to pivot and adapt, it wasn't that difficult because you were already using the technology in a big way. Am I not? We correct? were using it, although we do have we, the ironic part is we warned, we always warn parents no more than 20 minutes on these gadgets. Yes. Before. And then you have to go to them and say, we need oh. them for two hours. Yes. But because it is something we are accustomed to, and in particular, this the, the older set of trend we have now, they were used to us. Mm -hmm. The challenge really came with the new ones who joined yeah. us in September. They yeah. didn't know us, the parents didn't know us. So you had to try and win them over still. Yes. And more importantly, get the parents to realize the children can do it. We're not just saying leave them to do it because we want to say that. It's because we recognize that parents still think they need to be a little pampered and we are still saying, no, they can be independent. Yeah. So we have the fight of the independence versus the, I need to support. I need to yes. support and say, no, you can let go. You don't drop them, bram. No. But you slowly, you're there. Yes, you're there, yeah. but you're backing off. Yes. So it's really been an interesting year, a Rosemary. It's, it's been a year and a term. It's th these gadgets at my age, you want to say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's been our savior. Mm -hmm. It's been wonderful, the ability to use them. Mm -hmm. It's been fantastic. These young, these children, these three, four, five-year-olds, Mm -hmm. adapt to these things so quickly they yes. really it's really their world mm -hmm. yes but fortunately we are able to show them that it's not only to go on to baseless things or watch just cartoons but they yes. can do a lot in this new world yes yes but it was fun doing things like carnival on it wow <laughs> That must we have been amazing. Full carnival function. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. And I must invite you to our closing concert on Wednesday. Oh, yes, so, I will try. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, again, we used the, the, the children, we sent activities for them with the carnival concert. We, we had them 
do their own. We gave them topics and asked them to do wow. an extempo, four line extempo. We sent the music. Wow. They and their yeah. parents sang it. And That's on the day, young people got it onto a private YouTube site and they played it out and they, they, the, the topic yes. and the different things. Yeah. Then they had the dance because we never stopped teaching them dance. So and they did the dance and they put the dances together. So we had the dance. And then we had the children come on to the Zoom to parade their costume, which we spoke oh. about. So we were still able to expose them to things of the culture. Yes. We always, for carnival, teach. So our extempos were on topics. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, Zoom classes, you know, whatever are the things that directly yes. affect them. Yes. We, we we spoke about mm -hmm. it, and and they had to do on the topic the the topic for extempo. So they learned that caps on extempo is a, a a talk about what's happening in the nation. Yeah. So we have tried as much as we can to still keep what we have done, yeah. given it to the children, mm -hmm. and whatever we do they had to be active. So at no point in time could I be speaking this much to them. Yes. So wow. it would be, show me, yes. yes. If we're doing J, okay, you jump. Mm -hmm. You, what else you can do with J, jog. You, so mm -hmm. they can come up with things for us. They can show us in their house things with J or activities with it. So we always had to keep them moving. It was really or drawing or coloring or ripping or sticking. So it was, we knew it had to be activity centered to keep the year going. And that's in your name. That's in your, the name of your preschool. So it's not just a preschool, but it's also an activity center because again, play is the foundation of everything you do. That was, um, that was really good. I love what you said, how it's culturally appropriate. I love how you, you encompass all manner of types of activities and learning for all the different, you know, ways that children learn. It's really good stuff. So people, you see why she is, you know, this preschool is just amazing. And really it's leading the way and showing, I think other preschools and, you know, teachers and teaching how to um, do this for, um, their own preschools, which is another reason why we're having these conversations, because, you know, we have to mentor the, the younger ones and other people, because we have had so much, we've learned a lot, and it's time to share it, especially at a time when people, you know, resources are very thin, and not everybody is coping with the challenges. Now, talking about coping with these challenges, I want to talk a little bit about the kids. I mean, your children in this preschool seem to be really well adjusted, but are you seeing any particular challenges and also the parents, especially the moms? What are some of the challenges you're seeing? And then tell me about the screen time. How do we deal with that? Challenges. Yes. The children, I think, are, are, are the easiest to adapt. Right. The Correct. children are on gadgets that they, the, the biggest challenge for them on these gadgets is that it's not free for them to do whatever they want. Right. They, they have to follow guidelines given to them yes. and they have to wait their turn, wait, same way their turn, wait, uh, listen, they're challenged to listen so that when you get a turn, you're not expected to then switch off and go and do something else. Mm -hmm. You're expected to listen to your friends because sometimes you get called to ask, did you hear what they say? So their challenge would be, as in the classroom, waiting their turn, mm -hmm. listening to their friends, mm -hmm. but most importantly, because they are home, yes, they had to recognize that I am in school at home. At home. Wow, yeah. That's... So my feet can't go up on the on the desk because <laughs> the auntie is going to say, honey, you gotta put your feet down. Mm -hmm. And for the, the one who's jumping on the bed and she's gonna say, you gotta get off that bed. <laughs> so you know, the transfer yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it needed to be done. Even at snack time, when we say it's fruit time, when they don't come with the fruits, we say to them, But where is your fruit? Mm -hmm. I know you're home, but at school we know it's fruit time at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What what happened? So that transferring to the fact that I am home, but I'm in school, 
would mm. have been their biggest challenge. Yes. Okay. So yes. That would it. And the parents yes. know. Yes. Plenty challenges. There. I can imagine. I know this. One, they many of them had to be at work while to try and get Absolutely. this child supervised. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. a big challenge. Huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think no matter how often we say it, many of them didn't realize when we say, we are in your home, we can see everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there were times when they weren't appropriately dressed and you yes. know, in our screens. So they, that took a little while to register. Yes. People are in my homes because mm -hmm. it's not just my child playing on the computer. There's a world out there that's looking into my home. So mm -hmm. I needed to get a quiet space for the child to be where all my business is not being seen mm -hmm. to every anybody looking on. Mm -hmm. The next challenge parents had is like a parent said to me, I have to be a teacher for my child. I said, but you always have to be a teacher for your child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, no, not that way. I said, maybe it's a good reminder. Yes. But suddenly mm -hmm. they are more involved in the teaching of your child. Mm -hmm. And while we teach, they, we, we, we had a, to take a while to get them to understand. We just wanted you as support. So if I say, pick up the white cloth, I needed to make sure that the white cloth was near so that the child mm -hmm. can pick it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want you handing the child the white cloth. Yes. So it took a little while for them to get. When we say things, it wasn't for them to do Mm -hmm. or to give the child. So we say, get the red crayon and let's color the national flag. And they'll get the red crayon and then they'll pick it up. They'll start trying to color the flag too. Mm -hmm. So they didn't understand that, that their, their role was just to make sure the child stayed. And if, if for some reason they didn't know the red, to, to say, no, that one is not red, yes. even though we will still say it. You know, yes. just give them this space. Support. I think the parents also started getting anxious mm -hmm. because well, no matter how much we say it, I'm, my child is not doing as well as Timmy. And or, they're seeing it because everybody's seeing, oh, wow. Yes. Or, or my mm. child is better than Timmy and Timmy is wasting my child's time. Mm -hmm. So you had to go through that also. And that's part of what life is. Yes. Some of us grabs, grasp things faster than others. And you may do it in numeracy. I might do it in PE. And somebody else might do it in, in, in singing. So, yes. you know, it just takes a while for everybody to get where it's at. And that's why we bring whatever we're teaching in different ways. Yes. And in the front, fun ways. Yes. But there's a patience that we tell you, it's okay. Sometimes you may ask the child, what type of weather are we having outside? And the child is looking out and going, um, um, and you hear the parent, it's sunny, it's sunny, tell them it's sunny. And you say, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yes. Yes. Let them look at it, let them work out. Okay, mm -hmm. it is bright, you know, so there's a process. Mm -hmm. So it for them, it was an exposure to the inside and it's not their forte. So anxiety steps in. Ah, yes. yes. So, so it's really been tough on them mm -hmm. and it's been tough on the teachers because mm -hmm. suddenly you're exposed. Yes. You're exposed. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And huh. more than oh. exposed, even though Dealing with the child is never a problem. You really want to scream, let the child be, but yeah. you can't. So you have to, you know, it's okay, mommy. Yes. It's okay, daddy. Oh my let, give her a chance. She'll get it. Don't worry. She'll mm -hmm. get it. But you know, so yes. it's been tough, but it's been rewarding eh? yes. because we are at the end. Next week, we close off. Mm -hmm. And we have seen growth by leaps and bounds of wow. everyone. And I can safely say, even so last year, we had a term for school to close before we started in September. The children who came back to us in that September, who were with us for the term, mm -hmm. 
we saw a big difference between them and the children who did not do the term and join us in September yes. when students realized yes. that school wasn't opening. You yeah. saw a whole readiness difference. Wow. And it's the same thing as we've gone through this year with the new ones who joined us in September, the three-year-olds who turned four. <laughs> ready we know they are ready to mm -hmm. move on with us in september mm -hmm. they still have the challenges because they're still children and that's mm -hmm. what we are as teachers and recognize they mm -hmm. are three four and five years old mm -hmm. and that's what we, we we're working with mm -hmm. so it's a scream rosemary we we are <laughs> happy and proud of what we have done but we yes. can't wait to get back into the classroom <laughs> yes well you know i understand exactly what you're saying because we also have been seeing you know much fewer patients because people are not coming in and it's been challenging in so many ways but how to continue the techno how to use the technology and adapt in a new way to continue giving the same care that you're accustomed giving and that's a challenge it's frustrating there are some parents you know there's something i noticed in the preschoolers the parents are catching a tail as we say here in Trinidad to be goes we know to, to um to potty train their children. They just can't do it because they're accustomed to the preschool doing it for them. So they're like, everybody's coming and they have no clue and they just they just can't cope <laughs> because- <Yes. laughs> Actually, Rosemary, I think it's a daycare that does it because uh, we have two stipulations, three years okay. a year they come yes. and potty train. But okay. I was actually speaking with a parent today mm -hmm. and I was telling her, that I was explaining to my daughter who recently had a son, everything has a timing. Mm -hmm. And in our days, you started potty training a child between the months of 18 months and two years. Mm -hmm. But most of them have waited for three to four years to start because mm -hmm. they're using pull-ups, but mm -hmm. they're using pull-ups in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Pull-ups were meant for accidents, not to take the place of going to the toilet. Yes. So they, they, they're not, taking the pull-ups up and down and taking the children to the toilets and leaving yes. the pull-ups. The pull-ups are on, is supposed to be an underwear that yes. catches the accident. Yes. But they're using the pull-ups as a pamper. Yes. So the teaching of the potty training, and you are right, I mm -hmm. have four-year-olds mm -hmm. who are, are not potty trained. Yes. And that's going, the primary school teachers are going to have a fit. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, but a lot of it is the parents just really didn't realize how much was done in the daycares and in the preschools. Because generally, as you say, by the time you're three and during preschool, you are toilet trained. But I'm seeing so many children for the past year who they weren't, they didn't happen because it, it was just overwhelming for the parents. And again, the parents are not accustomed to doing it. So much was left for the teachers to do that now they're like, oh my gosh. I really appreciate what teachers do now because this is not easy. <laughs> this is not easy. It well, is not. Marina, this was a lovely, wonderful conversation. It was so full of many little bit, bits of wisdom that I really hope parents would listen in and you know understand what the purpose of you know being going to preschool is about. And what teachers do, and you know, it's just amazing. And I want to thank you for being there and doing this. And um, I want to know. You said I, you, and we were speaking a little bit earlier. Do you still have places for children in your online, or we don't know what school is going to be like in September? But do you still? I know you are very well subscribed, but do you still have places to anybody who's listening? I, at the moment, yes, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, like everyone else, the, the, the shutdown has affected us. So our numbers have dropped, but we do have room, even though we have quite a bit of children and support, we still have room. So they can send us an email if they're interested. Mm -hmm. And we usually take turn on um, any interested people on a tour. We do a virtual tour of the school. Ah, we so do a Zoom. Do we had to do that. We do a Zoom yeah. chat. So you get a chance to answer, ask questions. We answer well, it. And yeah. if you're interested, you send us your information. We try and follow up with you. We're yeah. working on getting our website up and going also. Okay, good. And so what is the email? I'll put it in the link below, but what is the email? It's preschool activity yes. dot center, C-E-N-T-R-E, 
at gmail.com. Okay, great. So I will put that in the link on the YouTube channel. And of course, for people listening in, you know, Frontier Kids Care, FrontierKidsCare.com. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and we have our YouTube channel, Frontier TV, where you'll find this. But we will also embed this video in the Play Matters section on the website because we think, both of us think play is so important. So Marina, thank you, thank you for all you do. And it was a wonderful interview. And I think we may have to do part two because it was just so good. <laughs> so thank you so much you. again for having me, Rosemary. Yes. I, I appreciate it. It's fun chatting about this school. It is. And well, we always chat because, you know, we're both as experts coming from our different perspectives. And we always try to listen to what each other has to say because we learn so much from each other. And we sort of know the trends of what's happening out there. So thank you so much for this. And to everyone out there, be safe, wash your Please. hands, wear your mask. And what's the third one from the preschool teacher? Wash your hands, hand. wear, your mask, wear your mask, and keep your distance. I think it's a distance. Yes, yes. Distance. distance. Yes, watch your distance, something like that. Yes. So keep good and take care. And we will certainly be in touch. Bye for now, everybody. Bye. Thanks again, Rosemary. Bye-bye.